Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Of course we have another game engine update. We were expecting all kinds of things to happen this week. Unfortunately, we are getting some nice new toys to play with, especially if we have to sit at home and kill some time. And today what we've got is a new version of Unity. Unity 20.1 20, 20 beta version is now available. And today we're gonna just take a quick look at it and then we're gonna jump through the release notes and take a look at what is inside of it. So what you see in front of you, this is Unity 2020.1. 20, now there is not a ton new going on. There's not a big facelift like we got in the last release or anything else like that. In fact, a lot of what actually is happening in this particular release is in the packaging system. We've been moving more and more stuff over to packaging and let's just keep that trend going. So we're gonna go over here, take a look at the package manager. We're in the view for all packages and I'm just gonna highlight some of the key new packages that are in place in this version. So we're gonna see the first one we've got is the new uh, build report inspector. So build lets you uh, access information about your last build and helps you profile the time spent and this is really all about the profiling aspect. We've got a couple of things in profiling and code coverage. Speaking of code coverage, that's another new package. So the new profiling tools to give you a bit more insight into how your game or your application is running, those are all being implemented via packages. There's one more in that set that we've got going on and that is down here in the memory profiler. This creates a unified solution allowing you to profile both small projects on mobile devices and big AAA projects on high-end machines. It provides actionable information about allocations in the engine to allow developers to manage and reduce memory usage. If you don't know, profilers basically measure how your code is performing when it runs. It allows you to, you know, what they said there. It gives you insight into how your code is run, and hopefully you can find the bottlenecks or the performance issues that you have in your code, where your code is spending all of its time. And those three packages all sort of work together to support that. Now, another area that is completely new in this particular release is here. So we've got Visual Studio. You'll notice here we've got Visual Studio Code Editor, Editor and Visual Studio Editor and Visual Studio. I can't speak today. Um, so this is the code integration into Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code IDEs or editors, whatever you want to call them, uh, are now moved off into package. So this adds support for uh, generating CS project files for IntelliSense purposes, auto discovery of installation, etc. So support for editors is now being moved into packages as well. I think as Unity goes on and on and on, we are going to expect even more to be moved into packages. Now, a couple of other things have changed and I don't know how profound they're going to appear, but one thing you're going to see is that I just missed. I do not want Asset Store, I want what was right beside it. Sorry, I want Asset Store, not Package Manager. Now the Asset Store, as you'll see right here, has moved, is changing in the way it works. What they've done is they've removed CEF. So uh, we're going to have another change going on here. I'm actually kind of surprised we got this screen. Um, but anyways, the uh, Asset Store stuff, the integrated browser stuff is moving away from the Chromium embedded and moving to a new system in the future. Obviously, it's not the greatest experience you've seen right now. We'll get to this in just a minute when we cover the release notes. So what else have we got going on in this release? Well, we got a couple of nice things. Uh, we got new 2D physics. You can see some of that in action right here. Uh, this is actually kind of a neat project. I'll show you it on GitHub. It was just released as part of 2020.1 as well. And this is the improvements to 2D physics. Physics. We got all kinds of new love and a new massive comprehensive project for 2D physics work. So you see here, we've got a number of different scenes under a number of different categories for a number of different topics, colliders, effectors, joints, materials, miscellaneous queries, rigid bodies, and so on. So if you need to learn joints, we've got a number of different scenes. So if you want to create a hinge joint, here is a project showcasing how to create hinge joints. There's a ton of different projects to get you up and going if you want to work with 2D physics. We also had a couple of improvements to the hub. 2D projects should be more efficient to create, um, but there's not really a ton to show you directly in the editor. So what we're gonna do at this point in time is we're gonna jump over to the release notes. So here we are on the Unity blog. Don't worry, I will link this in the linked article down below. Uh, but what you see here, we got Unity 20, 20.1 beta is now released. Um, you can grab it via the Unity Hub. By the way, there is also an update to the Unity Hub. That is what enables the new uh, 2D project creation functionality, etc. that was there. A big chunk of what we got here going on, once again, is scripting and profiling tools. Uh, profiling tools help you get the most performance out of your application by offering insightful views into your performance and memory data. In this release, we've improved the stability, performance, and reliability. The profiler... Uh, to start, the profiler connection to a player is more stable, particularly with low-end Android devices. You can also run it as a standalone profiler or desktop app, which significantly reduces overhead and provides cleaner data when you target the uh, editor or play mode. Uh, 
Profiler now includes a flow event feature, visualize your job system dependencies. You can also add metadata to your profile markers and extensions to the recorder API. Now, as mentioned on, this is all been moved into a preview package. So all this stuff is in those various different packages I highlighted to start this. Ditto for code coverage package lets you see which lines of your code are executed when the tests run in addition to whether the test passed or failed. Uh, let us know what you think in the forum. Um, you can now get human readable information from past build reports with the build report inspector. Again, another package we showcased earlier on. Uh, new C-sharp um, debugger workflow makes edit run with C-sharp code optimizations by default, improving your editor performance. You can also enable debug mode now and you do not have to restart the editor, which is nice. Uh, Visual Studio integration and Visual Studio code integration was moved into packages as we just saw a moment ago. We improved support for serializing, uh, serializing fields of generic types. In the past, if you had a generic type such as my class T um, and you wanted to make a field using that type, you would have to define a non-generic subclass of it. We removed this limitation so you no longer have to declare the generic subclass and can use the generic type directly. Definitely one of those little quality of life features, one of those things that people find really irritating and it's nice whenever an irritant is taken away. And now we kind of get into a couple of the fun things we're going to edit our workflow. We've got uh, FBX enhancement support for custom attribute data from SketchUp assets and new access conversion settings. Uh, options to ignore gamma correction when importing ping files or PNG files. New ability for presets, uh, addressable user experience improvements, um, runtime catalog updating, and sub-object support. For those of you absolutely insane people out there, you can now import assets that are greater than two gigabytes in size. Not sure what you're working on, but you can do it now. Uh, new directory monitoring feature on Windows speeds up processing by only updating relevant assets. We will add support for macOS in the future. That's one of those nice things that they're working on the underlying guts for importing of assets. And that's one of the pain points with Unity projects now. So this is hopefully part of that coming live. A new public API and background progress window enable developers to expose long running asynchronous operations without blocking the editor UI and few other um, interruptions, which is also nice. So if you've got a, a tool that you've written using Unity and it's going to take a very long time to run, you can now do it in the background with the progress window so it doesn't block out the entire UI. So people don't have to you know, go make a T while your process is running. Um, Unity Accelerator lets you coordinate asset sharing with your um, when your team is working on the same local network. Uh, in this release, we added a local administrator dashboard for the accelerator that enables you to configure the tool for your team's needs. You can now edit prefabs in the scene view and inside nested prefabs. That's nice. As I mentioned earlier, on, asset store is changing. It, it's currently powered by the Chromium editor framework. Um, in this release, they removed the CEF, which is why nothing actually works. This means we're refactoring the services window and removing in-editor asset browsing. Instead, when you're signed in and visit the asset store website to locate and get new assets, the My Asset menu is available in the Package Manager window. You can download and import your assets from there. So if you love the way that it works before, tough. But this new new workflow should actually probably be nicer. I never really, I, I, I don't like CEF whenever I see it in my um, tasks. It kind of irritates me a bit. So I'm down with getting rid of CEF, especially if it gets rid of some of the bloat that goes with it. And you can download and import your assets from there. This window also contains functionality for authoring packages. That's nice. As I mentioned earlier on, the hub was updated for new 2D projects. So there is a new version of the hub available for download. It includes all verified and pre-compiled 2D packages and default settings optimal for 2D projects. It also loads faster than installing the packages manually. So you kind of get more of a pre-configured 2D workflow when you create a new 2D game using the hub. Uh, so they're, they're looking for feedback on how that process works there in their forums. As I've kind of showcased in the demo, the same one they're showing in this video here, uh, they did a uh, update to 2D physics, including improvements to rigid body 2D XY position constraints, um, which makes rigid body completely solid under any force and has almost zero runtime cost. Uh, Feature results from changes to the Box 2D physics engine that was ported back to 2019.2. Per frame auto simulation enables physics to refresh at the same rate at the rendering cycle, providing smoother physics and visuals, as well as Edge Collider 2D now lets you control the start and end points to allow overlapped edges with other colliders to maintain a continuous surface. As I mentioned earlier on, we'll cover this in a second, there is this new project you can check out. Uh, the Sprite Packer version 2 allows you to create sprite atlases from textures or sprites using the script scripted importer work Flow, which provides access to the asset database v2 features now as i mentioned asset database as a database v2 is basically the new term for the new importing system and and the way that they're going to store and handle and update documents in unity so that all kind of goes together and sprite packer version 2 uh 
now has access to that functionality. In the artist side of things, we've got our rigging package, again, in preview, uh, now comes with bi-motional, uh, sorry, bi-directional motion transfer. Our workflow lets you in, uh, transfer existing motion into active constraints and more. Improvements to the particle system, such as freeform stretching, uh, stretching and lifetime by emitter speed module. Uh, we are renaming UI elements to UI toolkit. Uh, we got graphics tools from the uh, universal render pipeline or the ERP. Uh, you can now use camera stacking to layer output of multiple cameras. This is actually kind of cool. Camera stacking allows you to create effects such as a 3D model on a 2D UI or the cockpit of a vehicle. Currently, camera stacking is not supported in the 2D renderer or the VR multipass mode. Uh, the 2021 beta um, also includes updates to the ray tracing features in preview for the high def render pipeline only right now. Uh, you can do uh, now do animations in ray tracing via the skinned mesh renderer component. Uh, Alembic vertex cache and meshes with dynamic contents are now supported via the dynamic uh, geometry ray tracing mode. So ray tracing basically just got a lot better, but it is once again only supported in the HDRP pipeline. I think we're going to see a lot of this with Unity going forward. So its functionality is more going to be split between the rendering pipelines than it is any other way. Um, I don't know if I like that or not, if I'm honest here. Uh, lighting settings are no longer part of Unity scene files. Instead, they are now located in an independent file that stores all the settings uh, related to pre-compiled global illumination. It gives you the ability to share, change, or reuse lighting settings across scenes and teams. New calculated pack margin uh, feature adds settings to the mesh importer, makes it easy to avoid UV overlapping artifacts and get clean and correct light maps. Uh, the GPU light mapper is getting closer to feature parity. Remember they moved, uh, oh, I forget what it was called. It wasn't Beast, but they removed their last light mapper that was built in, uh, so they're slowly bringing up the new one and the new features of functionality online. Baked light cookies support in HDRP will be coming very soon. Notice that that is not part of this release, but that is one of the advantages of the, moving to this more modular package-based approach. So later, as part of the 2020.1 uh, series of development, there we're going to be bringing in baked light cookies. And Russian roulette is a new method that reduces the total bake times when calculating global illumination. Be aware that um, using aggressive Russian roulette values will likely introduce noise into your light maps. Not sure that's the ideal choice for something, but oh well. And we've got some news on the platform front. Uh, we now require iOS 11 as the minimum version. 32 builds are no longer supported. Support for OpenGL ES is deprecated. It has been for since the last major version, and it's going to be removed in the next release. Uh, advanced developers can now implement their own conversion pipeline, sort of conversion process for output to HDR. A couple of changes actually on the HDR side of things. Uh, device simulator package now comes with more devices. Uh, new cache, caching shader preprocessor provides improved shader import and build performance up to 25% better. It applies across all platforms and render pipelines and is experimental. Keep in mind, you've got uh, released, experimental, and sorry, you got released, preview, experimental. So experimental is the farthest thing that you should be from production, by the way. So uh, do keep that in mind. Whenever you see experimental, it's early. It will crash. It will have bugs. It will change and so on. Um, number of improvements to the WebGL loader and template. Uh, added HDR, once again, HDR stuff in there. Uh, HDR support was added in the editor as long as you're using DX12 or Metal. And they added a new C Sharp API for HDR support in the player. Allows developers to overwrite the default Unity tone mapping algorithm. So if you are working on HDR, you now have more fine-tuned control over how your high def range is going to look. And that is it. That is Unity 2020.1. Nothing in there that is going to you know let the world on fire, but definitely a nice um, iterative improvement. It's kind of weird. You kind of got parallel iteration in some ways because of the uh, the move towards that whole packaging system. And then once again, if you are interested in checking it out, the physics examples are available on Unity. I will link them in the linked article down below as well. All you need to do basically is go ahead, clone it down like this and import it into your project. And there is a ton of different uh, physics examples here. So if you want to get started with some of the new 2D functionality that was implemented in 2D physics in Unity, this project is up to date. So that is it. That is Unity 2020.1. Let me know what you thought of this release in general, anything in there that you were really happy to see. Uh, let me know those things in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.